Look, when it comes to EDC gear, it's entirely too easy to spend way too much money for stuff that we could get just as good of quality for at a much more reasonable price. Today, we're going to be talking about one such piece of gear. This is the Rovivon E3 Pro. Let's check it out. So recently, Rovivon sent me this A8 Aurora to review, and I really enjoyed this light. This light is one that is extremely useful, especially in the car. And when they saw that review, they said, hey, if you like that one, maybe you should check out this guy. And of course, I said yes, because I'm a huge fan of everything EDC, including flashlights and pocket knives. And so why not? Now, inside this box is the Rovivon E3 Pro, and it's a little bit different than the Aurora A8, and we're going to talk about how. First and foremost, standard Rovivon semi-clear plastic case, nice presentation. They didn't overdo it on the packaging. I think it's just the right amount of packaging, and I actually like that these cases are reusable. You know, it's not like some package that you just throw away at the end of the day. You can actually reuse it, and that's pretty nifty. Now, of course, in the box, first and foremost, you get the e3 pro and it says angel eyes right there because bam you've got not one but two torches yes that is pretty cool uh, what else is in the box you might ask well you do get this tiny little accessory kit which includes both a standard and a heavy duty key ring which makes sense because this is key ring size you can of course decide if you want to use these with a key ring you could put the key ring through there you know hot dog style or you could do a hamburger style you know whichever way works best for you now it did also have the pocket clip in this bag but i of course have already installed it and what's cool about this is that you can reverse it so you can have it do you know tip up or tip down carry because maybe you don't want to have a whole lot sticking out of your pocket maybe you're not going to put it on a key ring right maybe you're going to put it in your pocket you can of course make this super deep carry or you can flip it around the way that i have which allows you to put it on the brim of a cap and use it kind of like a headlamp which i find to be extremely useful because i like to have my hands free and that's a nice option now i will say this when you have it in regular pocket clip mode with with tip down if you were to flip this the only issue that I've seen is that this pocket clip will in fact block the charging port. So yeah, there's that. Let's open up the paperwork here real quick and see what we got. For those of you who may have lost this, uh, maybe you bought one and you lost it, here you go. Feel free to screenshot. What we have is over here, okay? And we're the first option. So the one that I have in my possession is the first option, option one. And it's got some info here. It says for moonlight, it's half of a lumen. Uh, for the low mode, it's 10 lumens. Medium is 100 lumens. And high is a nicely impressive 700 lumens. And if you guys want to see what that looks like, make sure to keep watching because I will do a beam test a little bit later on in the video. Now, you'll also notice that it has an output for triple A. So it's not just a rechargeable LiPo battery. You can actually load in a triple A battery. Now it's not as powerful in triple A mode. You'll notice that it's half of a lumen for moonlight, five lumens for low, 20 lumens for medium, and 100 lumens for high, which is not super impressive, but it is what it is. Uh, a few more specs, impact resistance at one and a half meters. I'm assuming that's if you were to drop it. And then water resistance is a really nice IPX7 rating, which is gonna be a little bit better than what we saw here on the Aurora A8, which was IPX6 dust and water resistant. So this guy is giving me a vibe of a little bit more premium nature. And it definitely looks like it. The aesthetics on this flashlight are really good. It's not very large. It means that it's going to fit in your pocket fairly easily without taking too much space. You can actually put this in your fifth pocket, which I think is pretty cool. So let's talk about the operation for this. Uh, when you first get it out of the box, four rapid clicks will unlock it. Now, I've already unlocked this one. The nice thing is, is that when it's regularly off and not locked, a momentary press and hold will actually fire the flashlight. And that's, 
That's awesome because most of the time when I'm using a flashlight, I'm not using it for extended periods of time. I just need it to find something real quick or to see something real quick. And so a momentary press and hold works great. Now in the off position, if you press the button twice, it will of course turn it on and you'll see that it briefly hit the indicator for LiPo. And then of course a single click will start to cycle it. So this is moonlight or low. I believe this is low actually, this is not moonlight. Uh, click again, it'll go to medium, and then click again, it'll go to high. And of course, if you are into the techno music like the kids are these days, you could just go ahead and hit it three times, and mm's, mm's, mm's. there you go, techno battle. I'm just kidding, the strobe light is actually really, really useful, especially when you're trying to get attention, maybe you're stuck on the side of the road somewhere and you need that strobe light to alert other people or you know, if you just need to cause a scene, that strobe light's gonna do a good job for that. And especially if it's like, maybe your car is outside, you're stuck in the middle of the night on the side of the road, you know, raise your hand if that's ever been you. More to the point, uh, the 7075 aluminum that they use on the E3 Pro is very durable, very scratch resistant. In fact, I was sure that I was going to scratch the body of this flashlight when I was taking the clip on and putting it off and, and uh, you know, changing positions just to try it out. But there was no scratching that occurred, even though it was definitely primed and ripe for that opportunity. It's very scratch resistant. I actually wish that more pocket knives that had aluminum used this aluminum. The real difference between this and the normal aluminum you see in a lot of flashlights is, is that this aluminum actually includes zinc, which is very tough and very hard and very scratch resistant. And so, yeah, it's going to make sure that it's really easy to use and it's going to, to withstand a whole lot of a beating, which is nice. Uh, you'll notice that it has this latch right here on the side, right? And that is so that you can actually access that AAA battery slot. But let me show you something that's pretty cool. If I were to go ahead and turn this on, so it's turned on as you can see, let's say, oh no, I need to insert a AAA battery. You could of course pop that latch, swap it like that, and guess what? The light is still on, you never lose that light. In an emergency situation, that could be game changing. So I'm gonna turn this light off so I don't burn out my camera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's try that again. A press and a hold will turn off the light. Now, you can see that there is a nice rubber gasket there, and that's going to help contribute to that IPX7 water resistance rating. Uh, the AAA battery is not going to be super strong. It's not going to provide this most strong light, but I'll tell you what it does do. It does give you a backup option because if you end up having to use this in a heavy duty manner and your LiPo battery runs out, or maybe you left this in your car too long without charging and the battery is low, the flashlight will automatically switch to the AAA battery, ensuring that you have continuous light. That is so cool. It's so important to have that. And I think that it's a nice additional feature because I tend to think of my flashlight as a worst case scenario situation or a, oh crap, I lost a tiny screw from one of my knives under my desk and a flashlight helps me find it. Um, but in an emergency situation, having that backup is really important. I think that that is something that most flashlights should have is a standalone backup because even if you're just carrying a few extra batteries in the glove box of your car, that could really be a difference maker. Now, I did promise a beam test, so here's what that looks like coming to you live from my garage. As you guys can see, the double angel eye setup right here provides a really nice wide beam. That's really useful because it helps you get more spread, you can see more, and it really gets the most out of those 700 lumens, which is quite powerful. I think for $50, this definitely does the trick. I think that it feels quality and that you can do a whole lot worse for your money. Uh, with all of that being said, I have the one complaint that I have 
with this flashlight is actually on the pocket clip. And for demonstration, I'm going to pull out the Aurora A8. One of the things I loved on the Aurora A8 was the fact that you could get a magnetic tail cap and a magnetic pocket clip. That is awesome, but it is also lacking on here. And for the life of me, I don't, I can't figure out why not. Why not have more options to mount this in a hands-free position? And magnets are, are fantastic. Obviously, we have a similar tail cap uh, that's meant for a keychain, just like we do on the smaller one. So I'm wondering why they didn't create a magnetic tail cap adapter for the E3 Pro like they did for the Aurora A8. Um, also, the Aurora A8 has a magnetic clip. And so that tells me that they can do it, but they didn't do it on here. I think that that would have been an excellent addition and would have really taken this over the top as far as functionality and diversity. But it's also not something that I think is a major deal breaker. It's just something that I would have liked to have seen included in the accessory kit. Overall, for $50, I'm very happy with this. I think that a lot of people will be as well. And I like it as a more powerful option to something like this, which would be a good backup to keep in the visor of your car. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below, guys. Do you have one of these? Are you considering one of these? If you're interested in one of these, I will link it in the description as well as in the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.